Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the MR Aero Design PC6 Pilatus Turbo Porter aircraft. Very, very, very happy with this aircraft. Let's roll that intro. All right, guys, the ugly duckling is growing on me. I love this plane. I didn't like this plane when I saw it 10 years ago, and I didn't like this plane when I first saw it a few months ago, and dang it, I like this plane now. It's a little bit sad. Anyways, we've got some cool things happening in this episode, guys. Number one, we are working on the wiring for the wings, the main wings. Number two, we're gonna get the main wings sheeted, um, so those are going to be big steps for this episode. Uh, another goal in this episode, I don't know if we're going to get to it. Uh, that might be the next one is the cowl fitting. That might be an entire episode by itself. Uh, probably will be. So we're probably going to focus primarily on the wings in this episode. And then a bunch of the little kind of details like the, the front fin and things like that. Finishing up some of the final details and things. That's kind of what I envision for this episode. So anyways, guys, first time here, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button or if it's your hundredth time here hit the thumbs up button that's what helps the channel the most comment down below hit that subscribe button hit the bell so you get notified when i release new videos let's dive into this build thanks for tuning into the channel and thanks for all the support oh and if i haven't lost you yet already um by the time this video comes out i think the cool announcement on my webpage is going to be up and running. So when you're done watching this video, check out the lighter side of rc.com. There's a link down below in the description. Uh, click on the store and maybe it'll be live. That's really the big news that's coming. If you're watching this way in the future, maybe 10 years down the road, maybe uh, we've dominated the entire RC world and now we own everything. Probably not, but uh, check it out. All right, guys, while we were waiting for that leading edge to dry, we started to go ahead and wire the left wing and get things rolling here. So here's a quick overview shot of the entire wing. It's massive from front to end. Okay, so I do have all the wiring run. Basically, we've got a bunch of things going on here. So first of all, the primary wiring harness is this power box one that the owner supplied. So this is just a standard MPX connector type scenario. This will power both of the servos. So number one is the what I call the primary servo. Number two is the secondary. So one is the aileron, two is the flap. So what I did was route that wire. First of all, to get our path. So what I did in the path is I put these split looms here and here. Now the reason I put the split loom there is because there's really no good solution as to where to run the wires. I could have put another hole here. Not a big fan of that as this is a pretty important rib so I wanted to keep the standard hole. And the reason for the split loom is just to keep it away from the servo arm which is down there. And there's a nice big gap in between the split loom and the servo arm. And the purpose of this one is just to keep the wires directed towards the rear of the wing because this is where the light works. Now the light does sit quite far away from those servo wires, but this split loom just helps to keep everything spaced out. And then as we come across, we come on this side of the servo and that brings us to our wingtip light, which we need three connections for. So, Working from the wingtip light backwards, I'm gonna put a servo connector on this end, a servo connector on the light, and that's how that's gonna plug in. So easy to remove and easy to install after we do painting. We've got our aileron surface servo. That has the servo connector coming to here, and we're going to have the power box wire accessible here, which is enough to have a servo connection. So that's the second connection. 
Then we've got the light connection for the drop down lights. We need power for the lights and then we need power for the servo. So we've got power for the lights coming through the orange and black wire. That's from Unilight. And then we've got the power box wire here as well. And the last one is going to be the flap servo here. And we have a this part of the servo connector there to plug in to the flap servo. And it's gonna sit inside the wing, but we could pull it out and access that connector as well too. So all the connectors will be accessible quite easily. Uh, I do have to get all my ends and stuff installed but that gives you an idea of how the wiring is laid out on this wing. And then our connectors on the fuselage to wing connection side. So we've got this one six pin MPX connector and then all of these other connectors. Okay, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight wires. That's gonna be an eight pin MPX connector that I have that we're gonna use on both wings. So. The wing connection here is gonna be just a, this one and another one of those, which is a little bit bigger. So, um, so I'm gonna get all these wires hooked up, all the ends installed and all that kind of jazz, pretty boring stuff. I've covered that, that in the other videos, but I'll show you the final product when it's done. All right, guys, let's see if we can perform a bit of magic here and make this happen a lot quicker. So none of the wing wiring's done. Still not done. Still not done, third time's a charm. Oh, it worked, look at that, amazing. All right guys, so went with these Emotech, Emotech connectors. I love these things, they are phenomenal. So basically what you do is you stick the board in between the, uh, the connector, you solder all the pieces or the pins on there, and then you've got individual connection points for the servo. So these worked out good because we had eight wires that weren't the servo wires, right? So we've got our two servo wires and then we've got the eight wires which covers the entire lighting system. So what I do when I am using these things is I just do a little diagram like this because what happens is when you do the other side of the connector, the numbers don't uh, correspond basically because, because of the way the connector works. So if we set it up on what I call the female connector with male pins, you know, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll just keep it this way. And then if we do the matching uh, male connector with female pins, we've got one, two, three, four. So what I mean by that is I'll do my mapping on like the wing side as an example. So number four, it might be um, something. And over on this side, it's gotta be number one, okay? so. That's what I do on my mapping here. So if you look at my connector up here, all I'm doing is writing here on the connector that this number doesn't matter anymore. This is number four, even though it will be labeled as number one on the little connector. So anyways, a little piece of advice there for you. Well, we got the wiring all taken care of. So basically we've got our servo connector here. It's been shoe gooped together thanks to the help of bent screwdriver. This is for the flap servo. So if this needs to be changed, the servo lines long enough that it can come out to this area and you can do something like disconnect the servo. So there's lots of excess there. Uh, we've got all the leads coming to this point. So we've got our line for our servo for our dr uh, drop down landing light and then our power for our actual light. Now the actual light side has been set up specifically with a male, well this is the servo connector, so obviously it's a male connector, and then the female connector on the light side with two cables, so that can't be mixed up. It's, it only goes together one way. And then our last connector, the servo connector here, so again there's quite a bit of excess, so we've got access to it from the servo hatch and that's been shoe gooped together. And the wingtip light, which requires three wires, two for the primary, and then the third one is, uh, is the clear on and off, or the white on and off. So anyways, that's been routed through here. We still do have this end cap, which needs to go on, and uh, but our, our landing light on the scale plane goes towards the front. So it'll probably sit right in this area. So the hole actually works out quite well. Um, but for sheeting this, we're just gonna leave this like this and then we will worry about the cap uh, after.
So, so that's the wiring on one wing. All right, guys, so on a piece like this middle piece here, I will use a combination of glue. So what I'll do is I'll use wood glue on these areas. And before I stick the piece of uh, balsa down, I'll run a strip of CA along the back edge here. So when I tuck it down, I can kick off the CA and that end will stick. And then what else I can do is I can put CA just on this front edge here and kick that off and that'll make it stick as well too. So nice little quick way to use a combination of different types of glue to make it a little bit faster, but also I think nice and strong as well. All right, guys, the left wing is all sheeted. We haven't done any sanding or anything to it, but that looks phenomenal. I think it looks great, turned out good. Wing's a lot stiffer than it was um, without the sheeting on it, obviously, and uh, happy with that. So we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the right wing. Still have to uh, sand off the edges. I did sand off this edge, so we are ready to receive the end piece. The nice thing about the end piece is it does give you the profile for the leading edge, which is nice. So that's probably the last thing we'll put on. And obviously we still have to glue the leading edge on this wing as well. All right, so I glued the leading edge on the left wing. And while I'm waiting for this to dry, I dealt with the leading edge on the elevator. So that, or the horizontal stab, sorry. So that's all done and shaped. Turned out really, really nice. Very happy with the progress on that. So next thing to do is shape the wing leading edge. All right, guys, now that we have all the wiring run in the wing, I'll show you guys how to wire one of these Emotech connectors. All right, guys, first step is to tin your board, which is a pretty simple process. I like to make sure my soldering iron is hot enough. I find a lot of people don't get it hot enough. Now, these first wires for the Unilite setup, I didn't pre-tin the wires, so it was a little tricky getting them on there, but it ultimately wasn't a problem to make it work. When I flip the connector over, you'll see that I struggled a little bit with the servo leads and I did tin those servo leads to make sure that they were a lot easier to install. So you'll see also that once the connector's done, you're bundling the wires together and you're using a zip tie to hold the wires on. I like this feature because it makes sure that you're not pulling the wires when you're taking the connector apart. And then of course finishing everything off with some shrink wrap that comes with the connectors as well. So a great setup and done. All right guys, and that's a quick view of how to put the wing connectors together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sheet this wing. Uh, we are ready to go with the sheeting and I think it should be a fairly straightforward process. Getting that done now. All right, so this is the left wing guys that we sheeted first. Uh, I'm trying a different method of sheeting here, so I'm just waiting for this piece to dry. I think it's already dry, but anyways, I put the end cap on and then I just test fit the uh, the marker light. So basically what I did to test fit that, fit that was I put the reflector up there, traced it in pencil, uh, drew out the center part where I'd need to cut it out, and then before I sheeted the wing, the servo connector is on the next rib, so it's sitting about here. So all I need to do once this wing is all finished, prepped, painted, and all that kind of stuff now is just reach in there with a piece of wire and just yank the, uh, the servo connector out. So it'll be a nice and easy access. So left wing is pretty much done. There's some finished sanding and stuff to do, but as far as the leading edge, the sheeting, the end caps, that's all done. All right, so I was chatting with a couple other guys over the past week and they brought up some questions and just some other ideas as far as sheeting the wings. So I figured I would show you guys a different method of sheeting something. So um, in this case, what I did was I glued these two pieces together with wood glue and I laid them down on my build table, taped one side with masking tape, flipped them over and then you can obviously open the joint because one side is taped. Uh, then what I did was put the wood glue in between there, let that dry flat, 
And then I went and put wood glue on all of the gluing surfaces in this wing, all the way down with wood glue, laid these two pieces on, and then went through and pinned everything down on the trailing end or trailing side. So to the piece of balsa that's here, to the piece of a little quarter inch balsa that's right on this joint. And then what I did was obviously weight the front portion. And this is not an advertisement for any of those products. So I laid my straight edge over the front section there and added weight to everything. So now it's following the nice curve. We'll let that set up for probably you know, about 30 minutes or so, and then it should be reasonable to work with. But uh, that opens up some different ideas as far as gluing. So I know some of you guys that are watching the videos um, have been asking about how to glue with CA and make it last longer and things like that. So this is a, a just a different idea as far as gluing goes. I don't particularly like this way of doing it because now I have to sit and wait, but I do at this point have other things I can work on, so it's not such a big deal. All right, so top of wing is all sheeted, leading edge is glued on. I just glued it on, so we need to let that dry. All right guys, both ends have been sanded, so we're nice and flat. And what I do here is put the end cap on and that gives you your leading edge profile. And what I'll do is take my planer, go down the entire length of the wing, and that keeps things fairly consistent. And then once I get really close to the black line, I then resort to sanding. So next step is leading edge. So you can pretty much get it entirely shaped just with the planer. So you can see how little we actually need to sand now. And when we look down the entire length of the leading edge, looks nice and beautiful. And some sanding will help to clean everything up. Next step, making dust. All right, so now we've got the end cap put on. And the next thing I'm going to do is take the surfaces off. Now, on the right wing, the surfaces fit really nice and everything is spaced out good. On the left wing, not so much. So if I show you what I mean here, the none of the bolts holding the surfaces are tight, so that does make a difference. But on the right wing, when we go aileron up, we've still got a nice gap here. On the left wing, our actual aileron surface needs to be sanded more. Now we are putting a, um, a like a 45 degree bevel on this trailing edge, so that needs to still be done. That'll give more room to the actual surface. But uh, this wing is good to go other than putting that bevel on. On the other wing, we're gonna have to, I've, what I've done is I've gone like this, marked the high spots in pencil, 
and we're gonna have to do some extra sanding on the surface itself. All right, guys, the wing, what is this? The right wing has been rough sanded. So it's really, really close. There's actually not a lot of filling we're gonna have to do on these wings to get them ready for glassing. So quite excited about that. I did have to replace this piece right here as it was damaged, uh, but no issues there. So yeah, that uh, worked out good. Still a bunch of sanding to do and filling, and we, but we're gonna have to go, go over every single piece before we uh, do our glassing, but that wing uh, turned out really well. So I took the surfaces off. The other wing now that's floating around over there, gonna have to take the surfaces off and do a bunch of sanding on the surfaces of that wing. So gonna set this one aside, pull the surfaces off that other one. All right, guys, left wing has been rough sanded. We got everything done. Uh, again, turned out really well. And there's not gonna be a lot of filling uh, small little areas and stuff on that wing. So I am very happy. All right, guys, we had two packages just show up today. And uh, been waiting on this stuff for quite a, quite a little bit here. And uh, let's open these things up. Uh, very excited to see these packages show up today. They just showed up. Um, awesome. Let's open these things up. All right, guys. First package comes from Sal at Sky Candy Landing Lights. Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. All righty. So we've got... Ooh, nice. Awesome. So we've got uh, some 7 8 and 1-inch landing lights. One inch landing lights, seven eighths, awesome. We've got some digital switches to accompany each of the lights. And then some, uh, some fun stuff. We've got our magnets, I love these things because they go all over my tools, or my, uh, sorry, my toolbox. I guess they can also go on my build table now too. And we've got a, business card there as well too so thank you Sal appreciate it always love getting some more lights link down below guys to skycandylandinglights.com check them out you've seen them on my planes you saw them on my diamond build if you have not watched that diamond build video on the lights you should check it out it is mental best lights in the industry love them thank you Sal all right, and not only did we get a Sky Candy order, we got another very cool package. All right, so this comes from Alan Richer. Alan's in Quebec, so eastern part of Canada. Um, quite a few provinces over to the east from where I am. Uh, he put some of these things together and uh, just asked for my address and said, can I send them to you? So let's open this up. This is gonna be pretty awesome. So I know what these are. Oh man, that is cool. I'm just gonna pull these out like this. All right, open this one first. Wow, is that ever cool? <laughs> Dang, look at that. Beautiful. That is amazing. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm gonna put that one back in the in the package. And let's open the second one. Now, Alan reached out to me and asked me to, um, he said, can I send you these things? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So he said, uh, you know, do them as giveaways or keep them for yourself. And I think I'm gonna be, uh, I think I'm gonna be a little bit uh, selfish here, guys, and I'm gonna keep these for myself. So I'll show you this next one. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, that is cool. Thank you, Alan, that is awesome. I uh, really appreciate that. That is amazing. Thank you so much. I, uh, 
I love getting stuff like this. This is amazing handcrafted um, pieces of art, basically. So thank you. This will definitely, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to keep these. I'm not giving these things away. These will go nicely in the new shop. I might put these in the trailer, uh, but I will find a good home for these things. Thank you. All right, guys. So last two things we're going to do with the fuselage here is we're going to take the horizontal stab off and just clean up a little bit of this area. So what I mean by that is cover this part with balsa. We've got to clean this section up as well too. And uh, so we've got to do that. And then next thing we have to do is build the front part of the fin. Now we are going with the smaller one because that's the scale we're following. And uh, so we have got to build that fin in place and then fill in around the vertical stab. So gonna kind of get this organized and then I will show you guys what we're doing with this. All right, guys, we are all cleaned up. So I've got this piece added. I've got this flat piece added, that piece added, did the cutouts. I have seen some of these, and this will make more sense when I pull the, the horizontal stab off where the line that I could have put my balsa on was right there. And the reason I didn't do that is because then you'd have a hole right in this area and I didn't like that idea. So I will show you why I did what I did in a second here. All right, so you can see the back piece there. That's pretty straightforward. And then this piece, so I could have cut my ply flat here and then taken this flat piece and put it down there. We don't need the clearance, number one, for the control surfaces. Everything has clearance there. And then, like I said, this would have been visible, uh, this hole from the underside of the elevator. So that's why I did what I did. We already had the plywood built up on the sides and then uh, just looks good. So, so that part's done. Next thing I'm working on is the fin in the front. All right, guys, the little uh, fin piece has been made. Pretty simple to make. You basically just put the frame together and sheet it. So no real plans needed, but the, uh, the layup of this is on the fuselage plan. Now, the way it's listed on the fuselage plan is not quite correct. Uh, some of the formers are named wrong, and it says you need four pieces, but it only, only has three. So anyways, but the parts are very simple, and they go together pretty much... Uh, only one way so leading edge I'm just waiting for that to dry before I do anything further uh, I did extend those pieces a little bit all right guys so we've got the leading edge all shaped on the uh, little fairing piece now a couple points to know here is uh, these are things that I was specifically looking at does this come and end in a hard point like a, a flat area, no it doesn't. It comes all the way down to a point. And then if you look at the full scale pictures that we're copying, uh, the joint doesn't come straight down. It kind of comes down at an angle like this and kind of molds into the uh, vertical stab. So we've mimicked that as much as possible. And then we still have to deal with this area right here on both sides, but that looks good. And ready to glue that on. All right, I just pulled the tape off, guys, and that worked out beautifully. It looks awesome. That, uh, that worked out great. Very impressed with that. So, All right, guys, that is going to end it for this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching the videos. A couple things. Shout out to Sal at Sky Candy. Thank you, Sal, for sending me those lights and all the goodies. appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Alan, for sending me those beautiful plaques. Right now they're hiding right back there. And uh, if you haven't done so already, guys, go to the lighter side of rc.com. There's a link down below. Check out the store. We just announced today, actually, which would be when this video comes out tomorrow. That is today. But uh, we just announced today that we are the official SWEWIN agent for Canada. So wicked news and uh, pretty cool things happening over here at the lighter side of RC. Dot com. The website's a constant work in progress. Uh, my web developer is putting work in on that every single day and we're constantly making changes as things change. And we will have lots of additions to the store over the next few weeks and also few months. So make sure you continue to check back and check it out even if you're not in the market for a turbine. There's lots of cool things to see there. So 
We accomplished a fair bit in this video, guys. Quite a few different random things, I guess. The, uh, the next video, I think we're gonna be focusing on the cowl primarily. So that's gonna be the next focus because we need to get the cowl fit and we need to get the cowl operational and essentially the engine installed sort of uh, before we can move on with other things. We are getting very, very close with this aircraft. Uh, also coming up, we're gonna be working on the doors and all that stuff. So that'll be a separate video as well. So essentially what we have left is we've got the cowl and engine fitment uh, and making the doors and all that stuff for the cowl. We've got the um, doors on the airplane and all that stuff to do, which is another uh, big step as well. We've got to install them then take them off. And then as a last step, we'll be doing the, uh, the wing struts. We'll probably do that in the door video as well too. And then we're pretty, pretty much ready to start glassing this thing. So it's going to be exciting. That'll be its own video as well too. Maybe a two part video because we've got wings and so many different surfaces to do. And then I foresee another video with priming the thing and then another video with putting all the scale details on after priming. So still lots of videos to come on this, uh, on this Pilatus PC6 from MR Aero Designs but lots of cool steps have been completed and we do have lots of fun steps left to do as well too. So lots of exciting things coming up on the channel. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching these videos. I do appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell so you get notified when I do release new videos. That's it guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will see you in the next video.